is Vanessa and welcome to my YouTube channel. I wanted to show you a little bit more about myself. I wanted to be more open about what I've accomplished so far and how I got where I am at the moment. And these episodes are more about me talking and showing you what it means to take risks and do challenges and get to know you, you know, get to know yourself a little bit better. Um, and so today I want to talk about why I left Freeletics, why after 10 years of being a role model, being the face of Freeletics or like um, working there from the very beginning, now I had to, I had to decide for myself, I want to leave and um, I wanted to. Um, I wanted to give you a little bit of overview and maybe this will motiv motivate somebody else to do something new, to get some new challenges in or even just like to listen what I've been through so far. If you have not done this yet, uh, I want to give me a follow, give me a like just helps me to know that um, it's important what I do or like it's interesting what I do and uh, if you want to know a little bit more about it put it in the comments I answer this in the next episode. This episode is about why I left it and um, why I left my job after 10 years and first of all I start with how did I get the job. 2012 I was out with a friend whose name is Alex, shout out to Alex, a very good friend of mine. And we were out for ice cream in my uh, hood where I grew up. We passed by friends of ours, of his, one of them we, I went to school with, and they kept on talking to him about this idea they had. Just to him, not to me, he was more about like, yeah, yeah. I've got it, that's how they sound like. Yeah, we're gonna do something. We're going to get ripped and get a six pack. We're going to do something new and oh, it's going to be insane. And <laughs> I was not interested, not being involved in this at all. So I was just listening and Alex was all fire for it. And we uh, went back home on the weekend. He went to his first training and after that, he called me right away and said, like, Vanessa, you have to try this. This is insane. To be fair, Alex always had good suggestions. What I liked uh, back in the days, we also had like different trainings where we went together. Oh, he said like, I should try this and that. So I was always more keen to trying out rather than not. And he was right. I really enjoyed it. <laughs> Since 2012, I have not stopped working out and I become the fittest version of myself uh, ever. So from training to working at this company it was a little bit um, like it was four months between working out we worked out three times a week you have to imagine a um, few people back in the days it was not common to work out outside usually you went for a run the in germany the trimlifahrts or like this um, places where you can work out outside where they have outside gyms which is very common in Brazil or Tel Aviv or anywhere where you have on the beaches, you have um, bars and workout places. We don't have this. We have something maybe in the woods, but it was also not as cool. And you needed to go to the gym when you want to get ripped or you want to be fit or gain muscles. That was the, the thing to do back in the days. And the idea of um, the founders was to get rid of that and make sure you also know that you don't need any equipment to be fit, that your body weight is perfectly fine in the beginning and uh, depends on your goals. But if it's just being fit with your own body weight, you can be insanely fit. It was even before the calisthenics hype happened. And for me, it clicked immediately. For me, it was the moment we started working out um, three, four times a week, we cut out alcohol. And when it was 24, that was a lot. Um, we cut out different foods in terms of bread or um, empty carbs and sugar. For that, it was like a whole change and working out four times a week without spending money more or less, or like just being outside and not in the environment with anybody else. That was such a good feeling. We were students back then, so this also quite came, came in quite handy, but for that time, I developed this feeling of, I don't need anything else. I have everything what I need inside me. If I wanna become this or this and that, I simply put in the work and I will be. 
and that what the idea of that was very deeply seated in my inside my brain and for for this i'm very grateful my um my fitness my my fitness journey started there and quickly i became very fit so i was not fit back then so don't get me wrong everybody looks at me now and like, oh, you always been that i have not always been that I was not able to do pull-ups and push-ups in the beginning. Burpees were, um, I look really weird. I can show you some some videos of it, uh, <laughs> maybe in here. But it always you always start where you are and it's never too late. And you will always, always grow with the steps you're gonna take if you have a goal for what you want to achieve. And during the summertime in 2012, I when I got so fit and I, started to compete with the guys, not in um, pull-ups and push-ups, because still I'm a girl, I don't have much testosterone in there for growing muscles or becoming stronger in, in, in that short amount of time like the guys did, which I'm not gonna go into this road, but this is just facts for some, uh, for some science. So this is what it is. And my favorite quote from one of the founders back in the days was, which made me very proud because I grew and I um, got stronger or fitter almost every week um, was uh, the first time I did stand-ups. I was not able to do stand-ups. And so the first time I managed, we had a workout with 100 stand-ups. Don't get me into this. <laughs> it was it was like, what are the stand-ups is when you lay in your back and you try to get up. So you um, try to get your body weight up off your feet and then with a little, little bit of momentum and then stand up and lay back on your um, on your back and then up again. This is a stand up. And it was pretty tough for my hips and everything to get to standing or standing up. But at once I got there, I said, like, Jesus, I, from the hundred, I was able to do five or 10, uh, something like this. And then um, one of the founders, we recorded this and I just put it in there, but it's gonna be in German. So I'm gonna try to say that in English. He said, um, so this is the typical Vanessa effect <laughs> that I was doing this uh, five and then ten times and then you're going to be able to do the hundred and I didn't hear it I was a little bit further away and he and, and then I said what and then somebody said like oh he's he's making fun of you and I was like oh I know and then he said no I'm not making fun of her if Vanessa would be a boy we could all we gotta all eat shit and I was so proud of this. I know it sounds a little bit weird, but for me that meant like I'm insanely fit and um, I would be able to compete with them on like a really good level from where I started. But now I would, I, it takes a little bit more time. This is all what I'm saying. I'm now able to compete, but back in the days I would have not been able to compete with pull-ups and push-ups because I couldn't do it in the beginning. But this is what it is. And I was so proud of that. <laughs> I was so like, okay, this is, actually something I'm pretty pretty good at and I'm gaining I'm gaining my self-confidence and everything else what I need to show up and make sure even though I fail a few times it's still growing in, uh, in, in a different way. For how I got into this job and why I wanted to work at FedEx was the feeling what I got working out it was just like this is so easy I was so happy so confident and I thought this is this has to get out there everybody else needs to feel that because if it changes me and I did not do much of it I mean I got trained but I did not went through any specific ways it's just like I trained and I worked out and I knew and I felt that it is just if you put in the work you will achieve it that was exactly what I wanted to show everybody else especially all the girls out there because for lots of them, it was all about, I'm not happy here. This is not what I want. I want to get rid of, oh, and I don't feel it. Just work out. It makes you instantly proud afterwards. You feel good. You have this endorphin rush and dopamine rush and all these good things about just working out and you stay outside. You have your vitamin D kicked in. All these things with not much, nothing you need to buy these supplements or any machines or anything like that. It's just working out and I wanted to make sure everybody else in this world feels what I felt and that's why I wanted to work there. And so I started working there and uh, don't get me wrong, in the beginning there was 
no salary, no money in there, but I really believed and I had conversations with my dad. He was like, wow, what is, what is this? And <laughs> you need to be a trainer and you need to do a license. I was like, no, 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 we're not, no, that's not what I need to do. But um, a lot of things changed um, when I started. And for me, working there in the marketing department, the first role was creating content, making sure that we can show people what it feels like to work out, show people what it means if you put in the work, what you will achieve if you just do it and don't be like, just be patient. Don't be, don't be like, I need, I put it like in for one week and I don't see any changes. It's always just like these unpatient people or like unpatient thoughts we all have with lots of things, but making sure you put in the work for a longer amount of time, maybe two, three months, and then compare and see what was on the first day and on day 90. Just do that, take a picture, write it down, anything, but your mind will always put it into like, why are we doing this? Change is a little bit tough. And also why I always um, put in, I, I try to document everything just to make sure that I know where I started or what I've done or where I, uh, where I started with. The beginning was marketing, what I said, and I created videos, we filmed it, and the first years were insane. So much fun, so many good people in there with um, ideas, and we created videos for TV, social media, the website, also for, uh, like I said, TV, but our first TV ad was so big for us. And that I was in, I was in TV myself, I trained uh, tough, um, um, tough, uh, like uh, uh, tough, <laughs> yeah, I, I trained people, I was even at the um, TV show Tough, um, a, a journalist there. I was at RTL2 at N24, like just like that our hype was noticeable around and we wanted to make sure that, or like we, we were, I represented it. And the whole four year, the first four years of doing that was, was a blast. I learned so much and I was so happy to also in, within the app motivate so many people. Now I have almost 8 million people uh, following me in the app. I mean, it decreases in the time with people who are active uh, because people who started with me might not still train with me, but that made me so proud to show what I did that what, what I've trained for motivates people to start as well and I sometimes I also I still meet people uh, a month ago I went to a new training from a friend of mine because I really like trying new trainings and the coach there he was just like are you Vanessa Gepard and I was like yeah he's like you know back in the days I followed you and I hated you because of your training times I would I never got close and you motivated me so far and now I'm 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 this and that and I was I was really proud of this because it's just me doing some squats not not something special in in that terms but making sure that everybody else um or like out there there are people who say like this motivates me and not intimidates me or makes me like oh I would never it's just like okay let's try this and it was not fake never was fake you can watch this in lots of YouTube videos I uh, did for athletics where I do live workouts where you see me working out, talking and doing the exercises rep by rep and I'm um, explaining to you how um, the exercise is done correctly. From this time to 2016, I have to say I, after 2016, my team, I worked with um, for a few years, they left and it was my favorite content, content team. Shout out to the guys back then um, we had such a good time and they left and um, people who would take over um, would simply not be the best part for this, but that happened. And I was just like, I don't think I belong there anymore. And I did wanted to do something different. So I started um, to try um, to get into a new direction. So I wanted to go into the product side of Freeletics. I mean, before that it was, Traveling around, I trained with so many different people around the world in France, in Italy, in um, Austria, in um, in the UK, Germany, obviously. Um, I traveled as, as Vanessa, trained with the groups and um, made them feel important, I guess, 
but also wanted to share that it's so easy to make yourself become the best version of yourself if you just put in the work. So 2018, I, um, I changed departments. I worked in product. I was in R and D team for a long time to make sure that um, the athletics feeling doesn't get away. Because to be honest, we know, I mean, like we never invented we, I'm sorry, <laughs> oh, we say we, because that's what I, I'm used to 10 years, but yeah. Um, Philatics didn't invent, in, uh, invent the, um, the wheel new. It was more about using um, sit-ups, push-ups and pull-ups for something um, different. But so as a personal trainer, you can always get the stuff together, like make a workout out of it, but it has to feel like Philatics and that's what I was there for. And uh, the training journeys, take care of um, different um, parts over here and there, worked on uh, on, on new eras of the product and this was for me a more challenging way because I felt like I did not belong there and I did not know what I what I wanted to become and so this was a pretty tough time also because um, before that the whole era was more about tr me traveling winning races because I started to go into the OCR scene, which is obstacle course racing. And I was pretty successful in this um, Germany wide, um, European wide, and also I did some races and won some races in the US. For me, that was um, a big deal. And I, because I did not grow at, at work, I've, I kind of thought, I think, I, oh, I thought, I think I, I chose this path because this made me still feel like I'm not standing still. Um, I'm gonna put some videos in here as well. It's gonna talk about two or three of my favorite races where I'm gonna guide you through what I've done. And for example, 124 hour or 36 hour race. And yes, you heard right, it was a 36 hour race where I um, met a bear in a cup uh, during the race and encountered <laughs> somehow. And I want, I love these races and I love talking about them. So I'm going to have some of the videos in here as well. Just talking about one of the insanely races I did in one of the of these races I did, which were insane. And I, I wanted to make sure that I share with you the learnings about these races for myself as well. But if you click, I put them here and it's going to be an, another, another nice uh, content for this episodes for the series. So, also working in, 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 in the product department while also the pandemic hit after that, so 2018, 2019. 2019, I went um, to go um, do a sabbatical. I did that, it was very important because I, as I said, I felt more lost because I did not know where my path going to be like, and I thought four months of breaking this routine might help. I came back, we worked on new things, which was better and easier. And then the pandemic hit, um, but I felt at that moment, I also felt like, okay, I need a new change. I came back and it didn't feel like what I wanted it to feel like, or I didn't felt like I had a path to go through. But with the pandemic, I also did not feel like I do need to change my um, occupation now. <laughs> I think a lot of people um, felt this way. And I also was happy that I still had a job because I had a lot of people who had troubles and lost their job during that time. So after the pandemic, um, I decided to offer Freeletics um, a last time going back to the marketing team to create some um, some series, um, some YouTube series for um, for bootcamp. It's mentoring, it's uh, training, it's nutrition, it's everything in there. And um, that's what I'm really good at. And that's what I love to do because the feeling of like this moment of starting with a person and then a few weeks later ending this journey and seeing them standing in front of you in a totally different way, being more confident, talking about themselves different. And most of them, and I, most of them is under, underrated. Everybody said after that, thank you, Vanessa you changed my life. And for me, this is the best feeling. This was so, it's so, it's so fulfilling that with only some squats 
and push-ups, we make people better persons. And, and this is what my last um, projects were about. And since 2023, I'm officially not working at Philetics anymore. And so my journey has ended here. And why I do my next episodes here is also helping me with the coaching I do at the moment and everything to full, to get to the next level. And maybe for some that seems silly to put it out there, but I thought, why not? And maybe it motivates people or like maybe somebody's interested in, but I tell you the other episodes about my races are way much more interesting. <laughs> maybe this was interesting for you, but I cannot wait to talk to you about the races I did a few years ago and how much I learned um, in a 24 hour race or 36 hour race. And I hope you enjoyed my little talk about um, my new life now, <laughs> what my goals are. It's also gonna be a, no, a new um, caption of that, but I um, hope you liked it. Give me a thumbs up, maybe a follow. Happy to um, see you there and um, see you on the next episode. I hope you have a wonderful day.